Yes, yes, Counter-Attack Podcast with myself, Daps. Um, yeah, we're back again. During this quarantine, we're literally just banging them out, trying to, you know, just get more conversation going, just hearing from our guys who, you know, who we plan to talk it up with, but, you know, things happened or whatnot. So, yeah, we're just looking to just get more content, hear from the players and um, hear from people out, like within football, we're just going to keep it going. So um, keep keep sharing, keep getting back to me, loving the feedback. Um, today we've got a player who I played with very, very early on in my career. Um, this guy is model professional. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what much to say about him. You know, he's been at, you know, Potter's Bar where at first started, then he went to Yeovil, Chesterfield, you know, and he's now a vegan. We're, we're going to get into all of that, but um, we've got Nathan Smith. Let me just bring him into the room now. Oh, oh, oh. Yo. Yo, brother. What's good? Yeah, what are you telling me? Nothing, man. We're both eating, but if I tell you what I'm eating, I, I, I feel like you're, you're ready to chastise me. No, I'd rather eat to their own, brother. Eat to their own. <laughs> <laughs> what are you eating? Your fruit. Yeah, I've got some melons here. Then my other bowl, I've got some uh, a little mix-up, a little fruit salad. Oh, see. No, mm-hmm. None of that meat stuff, no. No dairy in there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're, you're proper plant-based, isn't it? Yeah, bro. How long has it been now? About five years now. Bro. You know, do you even eat all of that? Um, we're going to get into the football stuff of that, but yeah. Do you even eat all of that, like... Tofu and all of that stuff. Nah, man. That's all that. None of that no more, man. Like, back in the day, yeah, obviously, like, when you're making that transformation. Mm. But then, when you start getting the understanding of, like, what tofu is, and, you know, sometimes, like, like the chemicals within that, it's the same kind of chemicals they use to use in plastics and stuff like that. Mm. You're like, nah, fam. Out. I've always, I've always said that. Like, if I do you know, cut out all the meat and everything one day. I can't mess with that tofu and soya and, and, and all of that, man. Because it's, it's all still processed, isn't it? There you go. You're, like, you're defeating the purpose. Like you, say, it's, like you said, it's a, it's a process. You're defeating the purpose and it's not even food. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, I feel like people need to... There's that element of, oh, I'm looking for a... What's the word again? Mind blank. Substitute. Looking for a replacement, yeah, substitute. Mm. But it's like, no, nah, you can't ever find a substitute for meat because meat is meat and fish is fish. You know what I mean? Like, it's just changing the whole way you perceive it. Mm. When you cut out the thing, the all the things, did you drop to fish first, and then, or you just literally cut everything? Yeah, no, I went at first. I went pescatarian, mm. so I tried it out, and I remember after four days, I just remember feeling just like super light couldn't really place an explanation on it but i just felt good within myself and then it was only after a little while i remember um sam Morsey, who's the captain for wigan he had done the pescatarian for a bit as well but then he went and tried out vegan for 14 days but he only said to me on the 14th day so i'm like yo my brother like <laughs> i said to you about the pescatarian thing like and you're 14 days and tried out the vegan thing so i said like cool what you have in tell me what's this and tell me what's that Tried it out for a week. Mm. And I remember being in a hotel. Uh, we had a game. And at that time, there wasn't really that much information online about, you know, the transformation into plant-based. Mm. So what was always thrown into man's face was, oh, you can't get protein. You can't get protein. So eventually, it hit man, in it? I'm thinking, you know what? I don't think I've got enough protein in man's body. Mm. So I remember going back to the salmon. And obviously, most men that know that stay in a hotel, especially football, they'll know that that regular set yeah. of food you always get. You know, you always get that salmon there. Mm. I'm like, all right, cool. Going to eat a salmon. Remember, I used to love salmon. Mm. Stomach started doing a madness. Mm. Yeah. Washing machine kind of like, <laughs> bro, like, I can't go back to this. So then that's when the real journey then started. It was like real food prep from like Thursday. Yeah. Thursday, yeah, Thursday night, because we, we had to travel on a Friday, then Thursday I had to make sure I prep like a good four meals and stuff like that, mm. ready to bounce for mm. the travels. 
That's what mm-hmm. I think with me, that's that's where I go and think because I don't, I'm not allowed, I don't cope well when my energy levels are down, man. Like, like so I did the whole cutting out meat um, and I did it for six months last year. Mm-hmm. Was it for, no, last year, six months. I did the, I was eating fish, innit? But my energy levels, bro, <laughs> my energy levels were down and I do not cope well. So, yeah, man, I, I don't know. If, I think a lot of it is if you know, if you know what you can eat, and the right foods and whatnot, but I find as well. Why did you feel like your energy levels were down? Huh? Why did you feel like your energy levels were down? Why? Mm. I could feel it in myself, man. Like I was just tired all the time. You know, to get up and run, like it just wasn't. But at the same time, mm. I would. I didn't have that bloated feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, you don't realize until you cut out the meat, you're just forever bloated. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but you feel like that's normal, isn't it? So, yeah, man. I'm, one day, one day, I'll, I'll get there because I know it's not good for you and and all of that. But a lot of it's just it's just laziness. All right, so check with this. All right, yeah, you just said that. Yeah. So if you know something's not good for you, <laughs> always listen. Why do we continue to go down that road? If we know something's not good. For us? I, I I hear that. I hear that, and you're totally right. So I don't eat red meat at all. Um. <laughs> I'm back on the chicken, but I'm cutting it all out soon because, like you said, I know it's not good. And when you know, when you know what it's really doing it, it, to your body and, and everything, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a madness. Right, but, but then again, why do you then say soon? Because, because you, like, know you know what it is. You know what? If you're saying to me, like, if you're saying to me, you know what, like, I, this is the right way or whatever, then cool, like, the conversation doesn't even need to go that way. But because you're saying, I know it's not good for you, and then you're still saying soon, so, all right, if I was drinking bleach, <laughs> and I say it's not good for me, and I turn around to you and I say, boy, soon, soon I'm going to cry it out. What, what, how, would you, how would you perceive that? That's your own, isn't it? If you, you get me... You can you can take a horse to the water, but you can't force it to drink, bro. But are you gonna feel like I'm mad or something? I'm I'm dying in bleach. I'd feel like you're and mad. I'm saying that, no, it's not good for me. I feel like I'd feel like you're mad, but each to their own, bro. Like me personally, I know I can cut out. I've done it however many times. Do you get what I'm saying? But also, a lot of the thing is, I feel like it's a lot of effort because you you've been vegan now for what five years, so you know what you can eat. Like you've got a a whole forte or whatever of foods, do you get what I'm saying? Me, I'm just that ignorant guy that just thinks, ah, oh, just bare chia seeds and, and leaves and, do you know what I mean? Like, but obviously that's not the case. Obviously that's not the case. And also, anything that's good for you in this country, it's bloody expensive. It depends where you go. Like, that is the key thing because, all right, you can still say supermarkets and stuff still sell certain things. And like, when you say like, a choice of array, like when you think of it, there is something for everything that you possibly eat apart from meat, mm. like rice and all that grains. We got our own way of making coleslaw. We could make cheesecakes, like raw cheesecake. So, as much as people say like it seems limited, mm. it's not really limited because I could possibly find anything that you've probably got and reverse it and have its own thing. Bro, sometimes I'm seeing you eat fruit, so I'm like, this guy definitely made this fruit up, bro. Because <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I've never seen, I've never seen such fruits. I'm just like, raw, okay, cool. What happened? Because I actually like fruit. I'm a fruit guy. Do you get know what I'm saying? But why you look at me? Oh, look at that. See, look, how much did that cost you, bro? Not a lot, you know. One, one banana, one avocado, a couple grapes. We have got the flesh from the the coconut in there as well. You get me? Like the yellow, the green coconut, as you mm. can see, the flesh. Yeah. It don't cost a lot, bro. And obviously, like, I could say everything in here, let's say it costs me about a tenner, and it will go with me for about three days. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And because you got to remember, you're like, we only overeat because a lot of the foods that we eat is not transmitting into our cells, long or the short. So mm. if you ate a meal which was nutritionally dense when i say like vitamins uh, minerals everything like 
you will eat less than you do with the cooked food mm. because uncooked food um especially like the way you're, you're veg and everything like it it holds all of its nutrients mm. it holds all of its vitamins everything but obviously when we tend to cook things we'll cook out all the goodness that allows us now to decide to now overeat so again like even i like, made a, like a raw salad yesterday and but i sprouted the rice the wild rice mm. so what i've done for the night before Wild rice, but they get me powers. You get me? <laughs> <laughs> no black wow. So all I did was I just sprouted the the rice the night before. But right, so I just boiled the pot mm -hmm. and I boiled it up, and then just poured it into a next pot where the rice was in, and just left it. Mm -hmm. So then, all by the morning comes, it just sprouts. Mm -hmm. So now I make that with a with a chickpeas electric salad, mud fam. <laughs> <laughs> you get me, brother. Different flavors. Uh, cool, cool, cool. But how did how did that all like? Um, because obviously, like we ain't really got into it. We be talking about your food, but you play football. Yeah. So how did that? You know, not mess with it, but how did that affect your football when you first made that transition? Um, when I first made a trans, um, the trans, trans mission, it was like it was difficult in the beginning. Because again, like I said, there wasn't much awareness. There wasn't nothing really online them time there mm. about, you know, plant-based lifestyle. So it was a lot of searching going off. But I think the good thing was because there wasn't a lot of information or about it at the time, I was able to just go through my journey without any pressure. Mm. There was pressure in the sense of being at the football mm. club because straight away, you know, physios and everyone, you need to eat meat, you need to do this. Mm. And, you know minerals and certain things and vitamins. I didn't really understand about all that. I didn't really understand like where I should be getting certain things from in the food. So where I'm still eating like pasta and certain things like the white pastas and not really acknowledging that it's not good for man. Eventually I remember one moment, um, I remember like my skin was like, I could pierce my skin easily. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But I didn't really, I couldn't really add it up properly, mm. you know? But then I just remember, I'll never forget there was one game we played. It was against, um, it was an FA Cup game for Yeovil. It was, I think it was Solihull Motors, actually. Yeah, mm. if I'm correct. And I never forget, something in my mind said, pass the ball, and I didn't pass the ball. And then I ended up taking a, a heavy touch, slidding for the ball, but then someone studied me. Mm. So I had a big cut on my leg. And then I just remember having like a mad allergic reaction after that. To yeah. what? Um, so... At first, no one could tell me what it was, yeah? Like, mm. my head was frazzling, like, dermatologist, this person, no one could tell me what it was. Like, my whole mm. skin just started flaring on a madness. So, but long of the show, after how many things or whatever, I found that it was um, a chemical in the grass called Timothy grass, which mm. obviously what the grass had got into my system and boom. Mm. So that's where the real understanding of my body started to, to happen from there because I ended up meeting this woman uh, named Michelle Hall and she does biofrequency readings hmm. where it's a machine that scans your whole body and tells you literally everything down to your, down to allergies and everything like that. Do you know hmm. what I mean? Like, it's expensive something. to get though, isn't it? If you ain't playing. No, like at that time that she was trying, it cost me, I think uh, uh, about a hundred, hundred pounds for the scan. Oh, I swear. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So then like, she introduced me into a whole different way of living, like three meals a day, no snacking, um, four to five hour gaps between eating because every time we interrupt the food cycles, like a washing machine, you know, mm. if you put a washing machine on and you've started it off like, and you want to put something else in, you've now got to more or less start the whole cycle again. Whereas, so the same with the body, whereas when we're now interrupting the cycle, food that was meant to be breaking down now gets left because now the digestive system goes up to the top of the track to try mm. and work on that. So then now we're not really getting a full breakdown of what our body needs, which then allows us to overeat. And then that's when all the habits come into it and everything. So do you, see how, like, do you see how information and education is key? Because yeah, it's key, it's key, it's key. Bro, because if, if more people knew that and knew like the science behind it, you know, it would just change a whole lot. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or if more people even knew that they could go and get a scan that lets you know everything, what's wrong with you and, and mm -hmm. how your body's working and blah, blah, blah. It's, it'll save lives and, bro, it's mad. 
hundred percent. But it's it's difficult because the way the whole line of the system set up in that way is to make sure people believe in one thing. Mm. Do you know, so it's like anti-inflammatory, ginger, cayenne pepper, all of that. Like you got swelling, boom, and you're taking all of that. Swelling goes down, reduces quick. A couple of times I had swellings. I remember um, the physio was saying, oh, he gave, gave, he gave me like the, um, what do you call them? The anti-inflammatories, isn't it? Them mm. tablets. Yeah. But obviously, I'm on my little journey, innit? And I'm like, mm. I don't believe in all this no more. Mm. But at the same time, I had to be smart with my manoeuvres because it's like, well, if I say I'm not taking this, you're going against the green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, again, with the flu jab. Mm. I remember managers, they wanted you to take the flu jab. And I remember one time, one manager was like, yeah, like, everyone is getting a flu jab. Yeah. All names were down on the list and everything. I'm like, oh my. Gosh, how am I going to move with this manoeuvre? Because I'm not on this. Because at that point, I knew and understood about the flu jabs, you know, the animal in, um, ingredients that has in mm -hmm. them and the aluminium, which is causing a lot of ailments and issues. It's meant to show all of that down the line. You know, and when people are passing, and it's been surely like there's been actual documentation, scientifically proven. Mm -hmm. Obviously, sometimes people die down the line of natural causes. But what is in some of these vaccines that some people are having like is causing detrimental effects down the line. Mm. So I'm like, boy, I don't know how I'm going <laughs> to do with this one, you know? So I remember there, I'm like, all right, cool. It's alphabetical order. Yeah. Mm. And I'm Smith, so I'm on the S. All right, cool. Let me go in the gym, do my gym workout and you get me. Mm. So I did my workout. And then as it got closer to me, picked up my stuff in the locker, mm. gone. Yeah, gone. I'm saying I'm not, not, not doing it. So I was thinking, uh, next day I come and I think I'm gonna get some repercussions or whatever. But no, nah, there was nothing. No one didn't say nothing, no, nothing. And then I think that's when, like, a whole lot more of the respect from how man was living started, like, coming more into fruition just because man could now see, right, like, smudge's not really getting any nickels. Like, he doesn't even go on to the, the physio bed. Mm. Like, He's always seen me energised. We've got double sessions. Man, I'm in mean, mint, sound, whatever, in the egg on the second mm. session. And they're running out. And remember, the food's got to break down. But we've got to go back in, what, 45 minutes? Yeah. So, man, I'm running out and jogging. Oh, my stomach. And these times, I've just made my smoothie and I'm, I'm good. You get me? Mm. So, yeah, man, like you said, they're like, but it's just, it's difficult because a lot of the information isn't there, which is isn't plastered in our face it's the other so-called normal mm. way that they try to make us go so again it's just like just if you like spread a word pass of information yeah it's, it's mad because I'm, I'm like that as well i don't i don't like putting like foreign foreign things in my body man mm. yeah and i say that and then you're thinking yeah but you put meat in your body but uh, <laughs> no, say, no, listen the meat thing i can say <laughs> i never get onto anyone for eating meat you know, no, I, I, I do I do like that about you to be honest. You know, you get a lot of them plant based or whatever, and it's like a it's a thing. Like, what? You're eating this, you're eating that, no, no. I always say, listen, your your thing is more about at least you can pass the information on. Pass the information on, and then the rest is up to you, bro. So but yeah. I like you know, like for example, like a, a religious man. Hmm. Like for me, through my experience, when someone who's religious comes up to man and says, oh, God, this, God, that, you should do this, da, 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 mm -hmm. like, it's, a, it's a put off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But the people who I have truly gravitated to that are religious and everything. The ones that live by it. Who live by it and they don't say nothing to man. Mm. And then it's like, raw, like, like, what's that scripture like mm. that you're on? Uh, I like how you move and like then there we have the local reasons and whatever then yeah they may pop up and say x y and z about church or you know or anything and or even like my some of my muslim friends and like i said again my boy sam mozi like mm. he embodies like he lives you know that way of a muslim life mm. so i could only respect because he's never telling to me i'll oh, do this do that mm. but there's certain aspects of how he conducts himself which makes me intrigued to ask more questions. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So people that come at me in that way, I respect even more, like just living what they're doing. And it's like it makes me gravitate to answer questions. So which is why mm. again, 
only reason why I said about the meat thing in the beginning is because you said, I know it's not good for you. And I, I think it's different because, because you actually know me as well. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah, if you were speaking to a normal person, you'd probably, to be honest, even if I said that, I'd probably, probably ignore it, you know? Oh, if you were you? someone else, yeah, I'd probably ignore it. Because I know, like, you get me and whatnot, like, mm. because where it is, again, like, it's difficult for man sometimes because I live my life a certain way and what I've come to realise is that some people, deep down, know that they're not living in the way that they actually should and want to. Mm. And then it's like, they feel like, a presence from myself that I'm telling them to do something when mm. I, don't, I don't even say nothing to know, you know? Mm. I that's, never, that's more of a conscious thing, though. Yeah, like, I don't say to anyone, live, eat this or eat that. If a man says to me, yo, fam, like, I've got an issue with X, Y, and Z, like, what do you think? Then I will say, all right, cool. But bear my brethren, they'll go out, yeah, my one food, like, some of my brethren have their birthdays in, like, um, in Turkish restaurants and they eat, mm. uh, order not bear meat. What am I going to do? Turn around and say, you can't... Uh, I don't mm. turn around and say I'm not coming. No, mm. but like if I've got invite, I'm going to my bread and sing. If I don't eat nothing, I don't eat nothing, innit? Like I might just eat a one chips. Yeah, I know that the chips ain't whatnot. But just to kind of just be a part with my people, then I'm like, all right, mm. I might have that chips or if they've got a little veg something, then all right, mm. cool, I might just go. Because I'm not gonna look down on my friends because I came from that place. Mm. So I'm better than no one. I just do my thing different and they do their thing different. Yeah, and hundred percent and um because I was, I, was, I was saying about the whole um, putting stuff in, in my body. So I don't like taking like medication and, and stuff like that. And that's why it was bad when I broke my leg. And all of a sudden, I'm having to just have bare medication. Like, eight, you have to nine. take? Huh? What did you have to take? I had to take what? I've, I've still got some in my thing. I was on morphine tablets, uh, the hydrocodone tablet, whatever they're called, ibuprofen. Um, I was on like six different tablets at one time. Just yeah. three, three, four times a day. Mad. How that make Mad. you feel? Like, when you're taking them all? But, you know, I always tell people, yeah, back, when I think back to that situation, yeah, I remember everything, obviously, but it's, it's one big haze. I was high as a kite for six, seven months. High as a kite. And the pain in my leg was still there. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah I, 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 I hear what you're saying with, with all of that, but um, on the, the last bit on, on that is that um, I also know that a lot of the medication that they tried to give us, there are, there are substitutes and they all come from natural ingredients yeah. anyway. So if you just go to the to the natural ingredients, mm-hmm. you know you'll get the same thingy without the actual detrimental effects yeah. to your body as well, isn't it? Like right yeah. now, I was, I was looking up. Huh? Go on. Yeah, I was to say right now I was looking up like stuff that I can do because my knees hurting me in it. So I haven't been able to do my running. But I've got a bike there and you know so I've been doing my, my cycling but the running I've not been able to do and I'm trying to see what I can do to like fix like a joint in my knee. Like it just aches a bit man. But anyway maybe we'll talk we'll talk and, and do with that. But yeah your career right right um it started off at well I would I I knew you from Potters but I'm pretty sure it started before Potters Potters but yeah. Where was um, it? I first started, I think, when I was nine years old at Ammonia, Greek team. Yeah, I was about to say, but it sounds like a Greek team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so over there I played. I remember the manager over there was Chris. And, yeah, so I was playing over there for a little while. And I think I went to Enfield afterwards. Mm. Um, I think I was under 16s with Glenn and Michael. And... Yeah, then I remember going to the the youth team, promoted to the youth team as well. So that's where it kind of began, began around that them size there. Mm. And then how did the whole Potters thing come? Because from what I remember, I used to hear that um, you weren't really serious about football. That's mad, you know. I've never actually heard that. Because... Yeah, I used to hear that you weren't really serious and that, and that um, it's not that you weren't really serious, but like you're you didn't really apply yourself as much as, as much as you should have. And that it was, it was Brownie who kind of got you to, to actually see where you could go. That's what I used to hear with it. Let me give you a joke. Yeah, check this here. Like one thing with me, which I didn't know until I think I had a trial at Wimbledon, mm. that 
my body language always made people feel like oh, I was okay. disappointed. And I didn't know that because as far as I'm concerned, I'm working hard, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Like internally, I know I'm working hard. And I remember it was down at Wimbledon where they turned around and said, oh, like, he doesn't seem interested in his body language. And I'm like, that made no sense because I was winning like first balls and mm. in my mind, I'm anticipating straight away and didn't make any sense. But it was from then I realized, okay, like, I remember sometimes people say to me, oh, when I, the way I walk, I walk like my uncle, the way I mm. like, I'm very much laid back. But I remember, mm. I can't see that whatsoever. So this is where now it helped me to now even look at people differently as well and perceive situations differently because I've now been labeled a certain way, but inside I'm hungry. Mm. You know what I mean? So now obviously when I see people move a certain way, like they could be very much laid back or whatever. I don't perceive it like that until I get to know the person, mm. you know? So, but I was going to football on a mat, bro, I was playing ball literally Monday, Tuesday, every day of the week. Yeah. Mm. It's the new river. Yeah, them times they're like poet used to have um poet used to work for Tottenham, so you had poet and Richard Alicop, and they used to do like the little football scheme over there. So we used to go mm. there from about four o'clock. Yeah, then I would go to whatever trainer I had afterwards, so whether it was Wolven Forest or Enfield, like literally like every day. Mm. So when now like and again, those were a lot of the things that a lot of people didn't see. Even like the other day, my uncle brought up something to me. He said he will never forget. And he said, this is why he goes, every time he thinks about it, it always makes him happy and smile. He said, because he will never forget, I was going to go to my brethren's yard in Bounds Green. And he offered me a lift. And I said, nah, I'm running. Yeah. yeah. Them time that I used to run with the, um, the black bag underneath, because I remember my uncles, them used to be in the gym sometimes. and they used to Yeah. <laughs> it's good for you. And so you're like, yeah, yeah, boy, I'm doing my thing. You get me? Yeah. So, like, again, there was an application that enough man didn't see. They didn't see when man went to Cornell College. And we mm. had this coach, um, the teacher, the, the man of the academy was, was called Nick. And, well, yeah, and then he's turned around. And them time there, he used to come to training in a Chelsea tracksuit. Mm. And you know them time there, well, what, was about a good 15 or so yeah, years Chelsea were that double. Get me. If you had a full length tracksuit on, you had some affiliation with that club. Mm. Oh, okay. I hear what you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because nowadays you can go out and buy any club mm, tracksuit mm, and mm. you get me. But them time there, if you <laughs> had a full suit thing, yeah, you were affiliated. So he used to tell everyone, yeah, like I can get you trials and all this. Mm. So there was all of that. So I'm training over here. I'm going, um, I'm going college football training. You get me? Mm. Even though eventually I knew he was telling lies and whatever because he never ever come true or anything. But yeah. I was doing that to him. Then we're still going to um, New River. Yeah, mm. and these times with Ada certain times, going to New River. Then we're jumping on the bus, going to um, to Wolven Forest. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of stuff that people didn't see. And again, again, obviously the way I'm perceived. But again, and then the brownie thing was mad. The brownie didn't even rape me. Mm. Yeah, Steve Brown, he didn't rate me before. Bam, you're not the only one, bro. Trust me. Trust me. You're not the only one. He was mad. Yeah, like, they get me like, man, end up obviously down the line. Like, I, call, I call my uncle. You get mm. me, I call my uncle because everything man done. But in the beginning, man, he weren't playing me. Mm. No, nothing, bro. I couldn't get a game, no, nothing. And then I'll never forget, I was involved in the car crash. My brother was driving, car mm. skidded out, boom, like, we end up hitting a lamp pulse, everything, glass hit me in the side of my face, everything, boom. And bear in mind, like I said, I hadn't been playing. Mm. And I don't know. I just decided to go training on the, on the Thursday because I think the crash happened on a Wednesday. They get me? Mm. I think these times there, we must have been about, might have been about, it had to be about 20 or something like that. Yeah, because mm. I was 19 when I was yeah. Okay, what? yeah. And then, yeah, like, the next day I went into training, it's like, I don't know, it was weird. Like, Brownie started, like, reading with me a bit differently. And then all of a sudden, so he's gonna play me. So I'm like, you know, the moments though in, in, in life where you're like, someone wants me to fail here. Mm. I've not played how long. I've now just been involved in a big car accident. You get me? I still got the glass in my ear. I think I still got it in there now, still to be honest. Still got the glass in my ear. And you now wanna play me like, what's going off? Like, someone wants me to fail here, innit? Mm. 
Mm. And then, boy, the rest was history. Like, man was playing, playing. And then, before you know it, Brownie saying, yeah, we're going to line up a little trial. Obviously, I'm not going down Dagnar Redbridge, which was just a mad thing them time there, like, what the setup was. And then, obviously, then the manager saying to me, and I remember, like, he was there for a while. And I'm like, well, where do you see me in your team? He's telling me third choice, left back, but we want you to sign a, a non-contract. Non-contract, yeah. <laughs> Like, no, Jack <laughs> I could see something that was going over there that I wasn't really fond of the minute I walked in there because I noticed there was a lot of players there, a lot of black men, to be honest, that were mm. there. Yeah, a lot of youth, man. And it was like, it just seemed like they were just there for like, just in case. Mm. Like, and we make and make a look. It just how it, it just didn't feel. And you know, all I mean, on non contract. Yeah. No, they were actually on contract, but like a oh, yeah. youth. Yeah. Oh, the, okay, cool, cool, you find Yeah, it. I'm just like, you know, something's not adding up. So then now when man said, yeah, boom, like, yeah, non-contract, um, we see you as third choice. I'm like, hold on. All right. It's not a contract contract, but mm. it's a contract. Mm. Is that how I'm looking at it? So I'm thinking, well, even if I wanted to go somewhere, you're still going to hold something against me, ain't it? Mm. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm just speaking to Brownie. Bond them boy there, bond them boy there. No, so them, them boy the thick man for some fool, no. I'm not bustling. No, Brady, when he said, you want me to tell you, man? Me have, me have one link here over Yeovil. Mm. Steve Thompson, yeah, me have, got, me have got to start that one there. So, boom. He ends up, like, lining up about five of us going down there. Nick McCoy, Junior Dadson. Yeah, Junior. Yeah, all of them, man, there. And, yeah, we was back and forth for, like, five weeks. Every week, a man got released. Mm. And then I was left by myself, boy, in the sticks by myself. Mm. Different environment. Yeah, man. And um, can you remember? I always try to remember this one guy. Brownie used to love him as well. He was a he was a white player. And when you look at him, you would not think this guy could play football at all. But then he had mad tech. And I thought, oh, well, not Hector. It was a mad name. And then Send him midfielder. Was... Black hair. Yeah, I think so. No, I'm not talking about the, the Greek one. No, no, not George. You're not, you're not, you're not George. No. George is left footed. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the other one. Um, it was like Hector. It was like Hector. Something like that. Was it Hector? He, yeah, I think because he's the one that's in, um, in America now, isn't he? Oh, is he? Yeah, he's doing some, some works over there. Oh, so that's the same one, yeah. I, I remember, I just always, always tried to remember his name. And I remember there was one game where... So, can you remember the game where... Um, Potters, the Potters, Yeovil friendly during pre season. You, yeah, yeah, captain, yeah, yeah. Well, you captain Yeovil that game, right? You got me captain there, boy. Yeah. That was like my second year, one of my early game. Yeah, that's captain, boy. Was that a surprise? It was still, but then I understood <laughs> why. Uh. <laughs> obviously, they got me for free, and it was like, yeah, you know, I kind of give back kind of game. Yeah, it was pre season as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was pre season. And then, um, what'd you call it? And um, that guy, I'm just going to call him Hector for now. He was on the pitch here, and that was a game where I think he was supposed to show the Yeovil manager like what you could have kind of thing. It was like a big okay. game for, like, for some of the players. And then a lot of people didn't rate him in it. Not because mm-hmm. of his ability, but just because he just did too much. And then yeah. I remember there was one pass. I don't know if you remember this year. <laughs> he was in the centre midfield, and then he's given a, like, he's put... A normal 15 yard pass to the left back. He's yeah. gone and done tech and shape <laughs> for no reason and just fired it. Fired it at him. Brownie took him off. Took him off three minutes later. Yeah. Three minutes later, because he was just doing too much. But anyway. Yeah. So Yovo was 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 good for you, innit? Like you made well over a hundred appearances, man. In your first bowling. Anyway. Yeah, my first one. Yeah, over a hundred. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Over a hundred, and, and and how was that for you? That that step up from non-league to to the league. It was interesting, man, because it literally was. I don't know. Ever since then, I just said to myself, "I'm playing catch up." Mm. Because twenty-one now, late in the game, I've just got to try and learn as much as possible. Mm. So it became just making sure I done extras and just trying to understand the game. and But there was just that, still that element of no fear because that's what got me there in the first place. Mm. You know, and I feel like 
that's what also having a lack of understanding of the game was also a PowerPoint for my game. Yeah. Because as a left back, who's running with the ball from certain positions? Do you know what I mean? Like you're meant to kick that forward. Mm. But I didn't know I had to kick a ball. Them type, like literally no one coached me mm. how to like do anything like in regards of kicking and stuff like that. So I was literally learning the game from like I was 21 when I signed. Mm. So like I said, how, like, at a certain point, a man's going to clear the ball, isn't it, if they're in their own final third? Yeah. Like, I'm chopping inside and driving forward and then chopping outside. And mm. so it was standing out massively for me. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, again, that's why I always say to a lot of the young players, and if I do reason with them, I don't ever really, I always try and look for that, them good elements. Mm. Because when you now go into the, in the professional game, so many things do get coached out of you, depending yeah. if you've got the right manager. If you've got the right manager, he works with all of them good things that you got, but it just helps you to know, all right, these are the times to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going to do it here, this is how you should do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was good, man. It was interesting. I, mean, I literally had to learn so much. Like it was a good thing that I was living with Forbesy after the, um, so sure after that like, first season, yeah, big up Forbesy. After the first season, which I played the last four games, I then had to, um, yes, yeah, so I moved in with Forbesy the next season. And it was just, it was brilliant because Forbesy always used to watch the games back. Gab Tomlin used to come over. Lee Pelter used to come over. And we used to just sit down and, Boom, Forbes with the control, like, boom. Yeah. All right, him and Gabba there having big argument. Brother, save side. It should have been that. <laughs> so, again, even them time, I didn't know what save side was. I didn't know, mm. I didn't really know anything to do with football in that yeah. sense. And it's so, it's so crazy because you think that these things are like a given. But mm -hmm. unless you've been in the game for a mm -hmm. while at any level, like, you're not gonna, you're not going to know these things. But people look at you and just think, oh, he's just always... He's just always had it, but they don't see the amount of work that goes in away from just, you know, the actual playing to get to that level. Yeah, like literally that was the most amount of work I think I've had to do in a short space of time because I knew that the chips was kind of against me because I only signed, I think, obviously um, the rest of the season, that last season. Mm. And then I, I don't know if it was a year I signed for the next year. So it was like, all right, I have to make sure I'm learning. So it was so, I was like, my mind was a sponge, mm. you know, asking Forbesy this, asking him that, asking him this, asking him that, Gab the same as well. Then like, you had the personal battle because obviously you're playing with man from ends. So you always kind of got the, the cage mentality. Yeah. You, know, rows, you can't afford to get turned because you've got mm. Tomlin ready to say, that's what I do. That's what yeah. I do. <laughs> 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 so the pride, everything was there, but the respect, and then you just got pelts, scouser. It mm. was now like me being introduced to a whole new world and, and embracing it. Mm. So it was wicked, man. It was wicked. It's funny because like the that cage mentality is it gets a lot of man far, bro. Mm. Listen, I remember going like Burgess or Catford Pitts. Did you ever go Catford Pitts? No, 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 no. Yeah, I remember going to Catford Pitts and. Bro, listen, if not for pride, listen, I'm telling you, man, you can't let man do certain thing, man. But, and then, uh, when you, uh, when you then when you then take it onto the pitch, you've got that thing about you where it's like, nah, yeah. you cannot. Because I've seen man get megged and all sorts and they're cool with it. Yeah, it's not on. And it's cool not on. It. It's, it's not on. It's not on. Bro, like, if a man megs, man, nah, it's like, I'm vexed, yeah? yeah? I may not say nothing because, you know, when you give that reaction, Mm. Bear man want to giggle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the stomach, it's hurting, man. I'm like, all right, cool. Worse if a man says Megs. Yeah, yeah. And it well, goes well. true. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, you think I'm a deacon? Yeah, cool. Mm. All right. So I've, that's how I always be. Like, I won't say before I may have cussed or whatever. Mm. But then obviously, as life went on, like India and all them stuff, that's like, all right, cool. Let me not say nothing. Yeah. Because if I set, if I amp up, he's gonna be expecting something next time, isn't it? Mm. But you see now when he gets the ball, I don't say nothing. Cool, I can get the ball and lift him up same time. Then I'd yeah. be like, what? Yeah, yeah. What, Meg, uh, yeah, I, like so. It's all what, mind games you start learning as well at the same yeah. time. Man. And honestly, that like, is, and it, it just really gives you that foundation to to go on. And no matter what level you're playing at, 
it gives you that good, good, solid foundation. Because to this day, I'm not, I'm a still I'm still a competitor. Not because you know, not not because I've been taught to, to be whatever, like through playing games or whatever. Just because my foundation of where I've come from will mm. never leave me. And I don't care. You see these young boys, the, the way these young boys are playing, bro. I have to make sure. I have to make sure that I'm that I'm still. But I forget lift up still. Like uh, always, always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. Like, can't remember that nowadays as well. A lot of young men train around cones. Mm, yeah. I mean, like, again, a lot of academy man, it's just cones and whatever. Some man don't really get that real mm. oof. So yeah, like some man have got to get lift up still. No, no, <laughs> simple. Like we say, yeah, that? I might go India and do my meditation and everything, but you have to know the balance and you understand. Yeah, yeah, you have to, yeah. man to get lift and know when like cool, like. This is how, like, the game of football is at times. Yeah, like, mm. you're going to get certain personalities who are very much respectful. But when you're in there and it's real battling, like, that's one thing I've never really been able to get again was the real battles, man, got with, like, the Tomlins and the Forbeses, the Pearls, Andre McCollins. Like, mm. it was just personal. Like, no, not personal, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. Real pride in it. Mm. And they would all laugh and giggle afterwards. And, like, it was like, all right, cool, we may go home. And play Gears of War and all them thing there and COD or whatever for a period of time. But it was like, all right, the next morning was ready again. Mm. Like, yeah. We were ready for the battles. Like, and when a man couldn't score, man felt clean. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like what were you saying today, Gab? Like, like, he used to just go off in training. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so man used to love them days there because as time went on, it was like personal, but like pride battles weren't really there as much. And it was like... And do you know what's funny? In, my, in, in the group chat I'm in, one of the group chats, we, we talk that the, the big conversation recently has been um, like the difference in mentality between like our generation and generous before us to mm-hmm. the younger generation now. Mm-hmm. Like, if you just like speak on it, like, do you think there's any difference or do you think that things are pretty much still the same in terms of mentality? No, there's a difference, man. We can't deny that, brother. Yeah, that's one thing we cannot deny. And it it's like a generational thing because the same thing you think to yourself, our parents may have said. Mm. Grandparents would have said the same thing. Mm. Grand, grand grandparents would have said the same thing as well. And it's just because of how society moves, isn't it? Mm. You, know, you look at a lot of the a lot of youngsters now, like a lot are very much not in touch with their emotions or even just a general conversation with people. Mm. Why? Because if you look at how society's changed and we, some of the stuff that we focus on and we're on this instant gratification. So because of now instant gratification in terms of like, cool, I call it like a, a Amazon Prime life. We're kind of in there, aren't it? All right, I want to get to the top. All right, let me press that Amazon Prime button. All right, I should be at the Prem now. Mm. Why am I not at the Prem tomorrow? Like I ordered. Yeah. I want an Amazon Prime. I've ordered. I want to play in the Prem tomorrow. Mm. And like, so, again, like, we very much can be out of touch with our emotions and these things. Like I said, like, you just got to look at society, how it's changed. And the same things our parents would have said, mm. some parents say now about the other generation now, where I do my best not to say that because it's, we all go through that transition, innit? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, there's people saying again, now, oh, music ain't the same like back in the day. All right, cool, we know no. because that was back in the day. Mm. But then our parents would have said the same thing. I remember my mum used to say the same thing about bashing. Oh, look at the music, it's not the same. Mm. Okay. But like, and I guess her her mum and my, my grandparents would have said the same thing about bashing or reggae, them time there as well. So mm. it's just like the cycle of life, isn't it? But it's finding how, all right, how, all right, if it's not the same and you say, all right, cool, well, how do we get them to react in a certain way, innit? You know what I mean? Like, how do we find solutions rather than just saying, all right, cool, this is the problem. Yeah, we know this is a problem. People are very much mm. out of touch. Um, a lot of people and social media is messing up people's head. All right, well, help find solutions rather than just pinpointing on the on the problem all the time. Yeah, I, I think I think that's where that's where people were wrong. Because I, I always say now that that the younger generation, they are very different. They are very different. But I don't crucify them for that. I don't mm-hmm. I don't make it a thing to be like to turn my back on them. Whereas a lot of there are a lot of people who kind of give up on them and just mm-hmm. be like, you know what? No, you're not gonna you're not gonna I'm not gonna waste my time with you. A lot of these coaches yeah. are just kind of 
just put them to the side and just focus on the ones who they can kind of mold themselves. Do you get what I'm saying? Whereas, like... I, like a, I really, in a sense, it's like a coward's way out. Because you see a mm. lot of them, you man rate them highly. Yeah. And where the issue comes is that because some people don't want to take the time out to understand mm-hmm. why someone is the way they are, it's like, all right, cool. Brick wall, brick wall, I'm, all right, I'm gone. Like, don't get me wrong, as an adult, it's a bit different. You know, you're dealing with an adult and it's like a reasoning of a brick wall, then you kind of move on. Mm. If you know you've got a youth man in your academy set up or in your team set up, like, bruv, like, life is more than just about the game, innit? Like, mm. I don't know what ones and two struggle Donnie could be going through in his yard or just even a, a female could be going through in, in her house. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's like having that emotional literacy to just really sit down and reason and find a real understanding. And before you know it, like, that's what has helped me maintain a, a real friendship with a lot of young players nowadays. Because mm. what I noticed growing up, I never forget some of the older players, like the Jack Lesson, and they used to get a bit vexed when some of the, it was, because for me, I grew up in that era of respect to elders. Yeah. So everything a Jack Lester said to me, or a Paul Warren said to me, or a Terry Skibbon said to me, they could have said it in any way. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Like, it was like that. Mm. Whereas, as time went on now, when some of the other youngers now come through, and then they may have said something, the younger will be like, oh, you move yourself. Mm. So now, the skibbles and them, and they're like, the Leicester, they be vexed. Bro, I still get vexed when I see it. I get vexed when, when I see men telling coaches just to shut their mouth and that, and they don't know anything. Imagine that. It, it is mad. But, like, it wasn't ever really on, a, on like, a shut your mouth kind of thing. It will be like... Don't chat to me like, but the thing is, it's like what I come to notice was that some man dish out the disrespect. So, like, as an older generational player, like older than me, like mm. they will talk in a certain way, thinking no matter how they speak, you need to listen. Mm. But like I said, now we got you man them that they're not on no no risk, no, they're not on no taking no check. You this yeah. man, I dish you back. Yeah. yeah, and I understand that because you shouldn't uh-huh. chat to a man a certain way. So, when now, like for me, like I always do with man in a correct manner all the time, mm. always, and that's what's allowed me to like maintain like that balance with the youth man, them and reason with them, and they get man because I'm always in their corner, mm-hmm. always. If, and when like if a manager didn't understand something, with them like, no nah, man, like my man's cool, man. It's just that boom, 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 ready to just work with him and like just reason with them on a level because. Aside from the, the footballer, there's a, there's a human that is more active mm-hmm. than a footballer. Yeah. So reason with that element there, and then, all right, cool. Then you'll get that connection with the player. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's big, man. That's big. Um, what I'm going to say to you, like, Yeovil Town, what was it that happened where you moved to um, Chesterfield? Was it Chesterfield? Yeah, Chesterfield. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. What, what happened? Because I'm not going to... I remember seeing that. And I was thinking, no, what's what's happening here? He was, he was saying Yovu, like, and what happened? Did you just want a move away? Did you need something different? The circumstances at the club change? Do you know what? No circumstances changed, but it was like, at that time, I remember people used to keep saying, oh, that because Yovu's far away and a lot of clubs don't come to watch Yovu and da 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 and, you know, obviously it's a limited scope and... So at the same time, it was like, you know what? I actually want to wanna give something a go as well. You know, mm. they've just been promoted. Um, and obviously, it's just always seen the way Yovo used to do with things. It just seemed to be like on a, on a, on a standard level all the time, innit? So obviously, they just been promoted. I think them time there, Craig Davis was there as well. And obviously, I knew Craig Davis. He was banging in goals for Chesterfield. And mm. so then they got their new stadium. It was like, you know what? Like, why not? You know, so obviously then went down there and again, it just felt like being in a, in a city again. You know mm. what I mean? And reason with the, with the gaffer a couple of times and then that sign on the line. But was it, was it a pretty straightforward deal? Yeah. Not straightforward yeah. story. Mm. But did you push for the deal? Push in what sense? Like, you said you wanted something different. Was it a thing where it's like you initiated, okay, let me go out and find a club. Not, not, not in case of, I want to go here either. 
you, you, you let me go or I go on strike kind of thing. But was it a thing of, okay, look, I want something different and you speak and you, and you try to just make the move happen? Or was it a thing where they came in for you? But I remember, like, obviously, towards the end of the season, um, um, agents are always on the pre, innit? Mm. Agents always are pre and out, pre and pre and pre. And then I think then that was one that was potentially there, innit? So, obviously, you get offered your team, your new deal, and then it's like, all right, cool, cool like, how do we manoeuvre from then? I'm sure, I'm sure there was little pay deductions as well in our new offers, if I'm correct around that time. I'm mm. sure bear man will vex. Mm. You get me? Bear man will vex. And then it was just like, well, two year deal. Over them size, they're like, why not? Like, let's go. Yeah. Okay. And then, surprise, surprise, a couple of seasons back. In fact, no, no. What, what was your time at Chesterfield like? For you, Chesterfield was roller coaster at times. Like John Sheridan was very up and down. Me mm. and him, but that was just the way Sheridan was himself. Like with everyone, mm. you know. Um, so it's not even a personal thing. Yeah, it's not even a personal thing. And but you're still trying to work it out because the way sometimes you'd be spoken to, you'd be thinking, "Bro, man, like you know." But one man deep it. It's just Shezza's personality. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like he's a cool, he's a cool manager. Mm. He just, I think he had one of them things where because he was so good as a player, like a real boss man as a player, mm. it was like I think when players couldn't do simple things, it just frustrated him. I feel that way about Lampard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we had um, Bradley Johnson on the pod, mm-hmm. and. Um, he, he says the he, he said the same thing about Lampard that in training he used to get a bit frustrated mm-hmm. with with them at Derby because they couldn't do certain things in it and then yeah, he turned yeah, around yeah. just like listen not everyone's at your level of playing and not everyone has job but to hold it up <laughs> blah, blah, blah blah do you get what I'm saying so um, yeah yeah go on, go on. so I, I I get go on. yeah no it's true though man because. And then even when I went and watched some of Shezza's, um his clips, mm. I'm like, yo! Like, Shezza's had like, I could say like one leg because he had something wrong with his leg, innit? Mm. Oh, he used to join in the five or sometimes, yeah? He couldn't move. Mm. But he used to do a mad... I, could, I don't know, I can't even explain it. Like, <laughs> he used to do a mad thing. Like, he would kill the ball, like, one touch, like, kill it flat. Like, mm. round corners, like, he could see you coming before you even knew you was going to close him down. Yeah. Like, it was wicked. So I could see, like, how he was. He didn't lose the ball. One time, mm. he lost the ball. And that was when, I don't know, I don't know how I got him on his blind side. Yeah. And then I clapped him. Yeah. Like, that was only, that the only time. In, but other than that, like, like I said, with one leg, he was on the next thing. So I can see why the frustration come. But again, you start understanding certain things and it wasn't ever personal with him. Like, some mm. man used to go back and forth with him. Yeah. And they'd be in the where you think, oh, he ain't going to play next game. And he's there labelled him as captain. So it just was the way he went about things. And, but again, like the first season was interesting because we ended up getting relegated that year as well. Mm. So we got relegated, but it was like a bittersweet moment because man got relegated, but then we won the St. Johnson's Pay Trophy. Yeah. Um, obviously, man was there as well, man of the match. Um, we won the year, man of the match as well, Sky Sports and all that. And But then Yeovil got promoted to the championship. Mm. So it was like, okay, like, you know, but I was happy. Obviously, I wasn't happy that we got relegated, mm. but like, boy, like, I can't be vexed, like, because I've got a medal. And I think people forget, yeah, like, all the players that play in football, mm. very small percentage actually win stuff. But, uh, very what? small percentage. You get me? There's a man who played for 20 years, never won a medal. You get me? That's what I'm saying. So for me, I'm like, you know what? Like, yeah, I may not have played in the champ. Yeah, I played against champ teams and prem teams, cool. But what then started coming from my mind was that, all right, well, I know what it's like to be a loser. Mm-hmm. So I know the things 
like I see the signals early now. Like if mm. a ship's gonna sink, I can identify it from early and say, right, cool, this is what we need to do, like as a team and whatever, like because this is the direction we're going in, you know. But also at Chesterfield, we won the league. Mm. Yeah. I saw what it took, bro. That one thing with women like Barcelona. Gary Roberts was on the next thing that season, like mad thing, Gary Roberts, yeah. <laughs> So moves, he just badly man up in the middle and like, ah, oh, it was one of the bad Ian ever. Like Tommy, like it was bad. Mark mm. Richard, like, so I saw what it takes week in and week out. Yeah, mm. like Guy Roberts was bad that year. Like bad, bad, bad. Yeah. So moves, he like showed me what it's like to be a real leader, centre midfielder. Bro, man, badding me up one time. Remember, I didn't pass in the ball. Fam, fans have stuck it on me. I was like, all right, bloody hell, like. <laughs> but I then Did learned, the I, like, I didn't even lose it. Oh, okay. I was like, but he stuck it on me. Give me the effing ball. Like, look. Mm. I mean, they were like best bridges, you get me? Like, yeah. And, but it's, it was interesting because after that, it was like, whenever I got the ball, it was like, all right, look for my centre of the shoulder or mm. a winger straight away. So now when I started playing a certain other man afterwards, it was like, I'm looking for that instant pass. Like, Why I'm you not there? Where, 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 you, where you at? Yeah. And I'll never forget hitting out Sam like, yo, fam, centre midfielders don't want the ball, fam. Mm. It's a bit bad, you know what I mean? But like I said, so it's like, I looked at it in that way where I won a medal, I won, I won two medals. I won mm. St. John's Bay, I've been relegated and I also won a league medal. So I've seen what it takes. So if I do do any um, keynote speak talks or whatnot, mm. I can talk from a place of, I know what failure looks like and feels like. Mm. It's not nice, but we, we move, we go again. Mm. But I also know what it's like to win. Mm. I know what it's like to be at Wembley, play Wembley doubles, not even expect to go Wembley. Mm. And then all of a sudden, man's at Wembley. And yeah. mum's their cousin and... Like, they're just happy because it's like, raw. like, we actually, like, because for me, it's like, if I'm there, my yeah. cousin's there, my mum's there, like, everyone's there, in it, like, the brethren's yeah. there, everyone's there. But we won the league. When my man them turned up, yeah, we had to win the game, we won the game, man them on the pitch, we're just having a madness, man them are picking me up, and, like, if I win, we all win, innit? Like, that's mm-hmm. how it literally feels, so... Like again, like I said, I've obviously man got relegated, but at the other end, man won two medals. And like you said, how much man go throughout their whole career? Yeah. Mm, yeah, no, hundred percent, man. Um, so how come you end up going, going back to to your? Did they, did they come in for you? And just think like, yes, you know, they come in for man. And then uh, I think then it was only a one year offer. Mm. Chester offered man, yeah, and I was like, you know what? It's all long. Because obviously now I think, boy, one year, that's a bit touch and go and mm. like, man as well. Like, I need to, you know, you got to think about that same security and something yeah. like, well, same league, same level. Let's go with it. Like, man, know the area. Man, know everything. All right, like, let's go again. Had, had Yeovil made made strides, like, in, in regards to building the club? and Or did it actually, was it actually just think, okay, look, I know what I'm getting here. Let me just go back. Um, it was a bit of strides because... The they had just relegated from the championship. Mm. So it was like, all right, well, the Oval are always favourites to get relegated. Mm. Now they're the same favourites to go up, but I don't pay attention to them stuff there. Yeah. Anyway, that kind of stuff, you know, but because they got relegated, it was like, all right, cool. Well, you kind of feel like, all right, they're going to have that, that character and that resilience to, you know, go back up. Mm. But then was it even that year? I think it might have been that year. People got relegated. So it was, I'm sure it was either that year or the year after, I can't remember. But again, like, man got relegated and it's not nice, especially mm. when you're key and you're in it. Like, it's just real domino effects, like, boom, boom, boom. Like, you see this, you see that. Mm. You see how management's moving and it's like, raw, like, is that how you're going to move? And, like, and I feel like it really showed, man. And I always remember that Martin Luther quote, um, obviously don't know it word by word, but like, you know, you judge a man's real character in times of adversity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, and like, you truly see it. You see, because when things are going cool, it's all honky-dory, man. I like, what, what, everything, Chris, yeah, nice, sweet, boom. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, was that geezer out yeah, 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 yeah. But you see when it starts get sticky, mm. it stick, blue tack, everything. Yeah? Mm. Man start moving a certain way. Like manager starts looking like he's just aged 40 years in, in yeah. two days. Like players are just getting frustrated, little arguments kicking off on the pitch and certain things get said in a way that shouldn't get said. And it's just like, whoa. So again, like it put man in good stead in it to understand now at core and then just learn out cool. Well, well, relegation ain't really nothing to fear. Mm. Man still hearing it like I thought that was going to be the end of man's career like the first time around. Right? But yeah. all right, man build a resilience to to move forward because failure happens in life. We're going to fail certain times. Mm. Yeah, no one wants to utter a relegated thing on their form, but it is what it is. Like, I can't control. If I wanted to control everything, well, I might as well be a tennis player or a golfer. Yeah. Because then everything is in control of me, innit? Mm. But you're now in a team with how many men in a squad, like, yeah, if you get relegated, it's not nice, but it's not everything that I could have controlled. Mm. So you just step forward. One of the, the, the high points would probably be well, playing for, for you over the second time round, that match against United in the FA Cup. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you, you people probably, you know, bring which one though? The first one from the second one. Which one was the one at the um, the one where you clamped um, Sanchez? Oh, okay, the second one. Yeah. So people would, would talk about it. Like, what was going through? Ah, wait a minute. Did you actually think you was going to win that ball? Bro, big man thing, yeah. <laughs> Slow it down, yeah. Because I'm not a fowler, yeah. You're not, you're not. No, I'm not, I'm not that. And the reason why, because I don't like paying an eight pound for the yellow card. Yeah. I don't like it. So when you, <laughs> pay it, you see eight pound, you're like, boy, mm. I could have got a couple of packs of kale and them thing there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> some chickpeas from the side and you know, get me some <laughs> Celtic sea salt uh. and all that. So, like, literally, when the ball's gone to him, I've, like, just analysed it, assessed it in my head. I'm like, cool. When he takes that touch, yeah, mm. it's going to go forward because of the way his positioning was, mm. yeah? And I'll go, bam! But the Shut ball up. bubbled up. Oh, is that what it was, the bubble? Yeah, it bubbled up. Like, it took a random bubble, but it's like... I'm in the motion now, isn't it? So yeah, that's it. You just gotta go. Hope for the best, like you know what I mean. <laughs> it's like, it was the same with like um, when we played that on um, the the JP, JTP game, St Johnson's Pay Trophy in the final mm. against London. Richie, Matt Richie, is it Matt, Matt, Matt Richie, the one who plays in Newcastle, was at Newcastle now. So there was a last challenge because remember the game was meant to be for him. Mm. Like he was badding it up that year. He was on the next thing, obviously winger chopping in everything. Bam, and Every moment of that game, yeah, that's his yeah. touch was impeccable. Impeccable, bad, everything. And I don't know what it was. He finally took one bad touch. And it wasn't even like the worst touch, but mm. for a man of his quality, the way he consistently controlled yeah. it close to him, it was a bad touch for him. Mm. And it was now the opening for me just to go. Bam, like, because yeah. I can see it. Like I said, like, I don't get, obviously, I got a red card once and whatever. Like, that was because a man stepped in my territory too, Paul, I was very, really painter. Uh, mm. And for me, you know, again, man come from the ends, in it? Like, you come... <laughs> That's what I'm laughing. That. That's what yeah. I'm laughing, bro. <laughs> and you know what certain men are like in the football world, innit? They don't mm. like to do some, like, you know, like, some funky stuff, and I'm not on that, innit? So, mm, mm, straight away, mm. I've just gone like that. And it's like, obviously, referees then got, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, and I was doing good that game. I think that was the first game I went centre half, actually, mm. against Hartlepool. So, but yeah, man, like, it was just, it's just interesting. So, like, the Sanchez thing, I literally, it's just because it took that little bubble. You watch it back, it took a random bubble. Otherwise, mm. I know I would have got it. Like, mm. I know I would have, I know. I've, yeah, I was, was going to try and get it up, but I just thought that YouTube would, would try to take it, would take it down. But I just put it up on the, I put it up on the Insta anyway. But, um, yeah, but what, what can you remember from that game? Like, which players, like, stood out? Obviously, that tackle up with Sanchez, but how was his general play for you as a player? Because it's he one thing. He was frustrating, fam. Huh? Why? Because he was frustrating. 
I've never seen a man stand so wide. <laughs> like, he was wide. And then he, they was fizzed the ball out to him. Mm. And it was like, oh, my, here we go again. Like, um, Rashford, it was funny with Rashford because I know Rashford's a duckers. Yeah. yeah. So, but <laughs> as you get experience in the game, you know you've got to do one or two things. So, all I kept doing was I'll stay away from him. And obviously, when the ball's out of the back and they're playing, I can kind of see what he's trying to do. So, all I would do is, when I know he was going to close to make a run in behind, the arm. I'd run forward and push him in his back and then run yeah. away. So, he started going, <laughs> obviously, I'm just ignoring it, innit? Like, I ain't done nothing. But yeah. obviously, he knows it's me. So, I'll just keep doing it because I know I have to annoy him. Mm. I can't get booked or anything like that. I'm not yeah. doing anything about it, but like, I know I have to annoy him. Mm. And then it got to a point, you got Vex. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh, bro, blow it, man. Like, oh, sorry, man. Sorry, man. Sorry. Man. <laughs> like, I know the mind game, isn't it? Because I'm not going to give it no big chat back. Because yeah. giving the big chat back is going to annoy you even more. But I also yeah. know as well that if you put someone off their game, then for the next four minutes, they're off their game. Mm. Yeah, like psychologically, you're off your game for the next four minutes. So, cool. I'm just keep doing it until one time the lino went, Oi, free. I'm like, bro, what's all this up? Like, man, even do it. Like, yeah. all right, cool. Like, but what we can't have a little cool, you know what I mean? But I mm. like I said, I knew that I couldn't let him go. Yeah. So, I had to do what I needed to do to frustrate him. Mm. You know what I mean? I think one time went over the top, but I already set off. Like, you know, that's one thing Forbes you always say to me. Set off before your your opponent. Read play. Used to always do that library, like read mm-hmm. the book and all of that. Car insurance used to say to man, yeah, make sure we're covered. So I always had that element, and obviously, but then eventually he must have got through, and then he scored one. I think near one of the other players, but it was a it was a good like Rojo and all of them, like the Gaya, bad boy, like, and I yeah. used to just love. That. That's one thing I miss about Yovo because. Darren Way was meticulous. Mm. He will tell you, all right, if a man pulls the badge on your shorts, yeah. he will tell you that. Not pull your shorts, the badge. Mm. He will tell you if a man will flipping pull your airlobe. So like, it was down to the point. Mm. Yeah, like it was bad. So I used to buzz and I still do miss them, them analysis moments. Like, he would just go in and it was a joy. So even the way we had to set up for the game and, you know, really backing ourselves one V one, because normally when you're at league one, league two, you kind of like shuffle over and leave a man on the outside. But there was none of that because when the gay is kicking that ball, well, the gay played the first game, but um, even like the other, um, the other. What's his name? Rome- no, what's his name? Yeah. It's, it's, it's that. Romeo. Yeah. But even him, even when he's mm. kicking, like, but to be honest, I think the first game was the best one because they hit the gayer. Obviously, you had the um, the Raphael twins, yeah? yeah. And fam, more time you can give a winger, like, I don't know, a good 10 yards or whatever. Mm. On the goal. Nah, brother, the gayer was zinging the ball on some next thing, yeah. yeah? And by the time you even got anywhere in Raphael or whoever, mm. them man were coming at you, fam. Romero. Yeah, Romero, the keeper, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the gay was on the next thing on the first one, but yeah, man, like, even um, that young you, I can't remember what his name is, man, who came on, he done his thing. But no, nah, it was a good game. I, like, I think, I don't know, I maybe might have enjoyed the first one. As well. like, they were both good games, man. They were both yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, like, did you manage to get any like, shirts from any of them or anything? I got Luke Shaw, the second one, and I think I got... Um, so good. Yeah, and I got... J. O'Shea, the first one. I'm like, boy, Champions League winner. Still, mm. yeah, still. Trust me. That's, that's, that's a good one, bro. That's, that's a good one to have them Champions League winners, bro. And but when you changed... Oh, the, what I found interesting was that they didn't talk. Especially the um, the first game. United didn't talk. To each other? United didn't talk to each other. Yeah, that's what they just know. Because they know it. And it's like, yeah. faster. You're playing in front of a hundred thousand. When man playing in front of thirty thousand, you just can't. You can't hear nothing. Mm. So 
this is why I respect and I say, you know, when man's hair like cool, they may be overpaid or whatever. I'm like, but what these men do ain't no joke, which needs real respect. Mm. Which is why I don't get involved in the football discussions or arguments with certain men again, because you don't really know what it takes to a, to a point. I can say exactly. this, I don't really know, because I don't know Ronaldo or them boy there. And hear this. You, you were saying earlier on that Monday to Friday, that all Friday is football, football, football. That's what you're doing. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, mm. imagine the level that these players are having mm. to, to commit to. Do you get what I'm saying? But then, but then Johnny, Johnny from Derby, is watching them just thinking they're absolutely rubbish. And he's never kicked a ball in his life and thinks they're overpaid. Bro, like you said, I, I can't. That's, that's why I, I enjoy having a podcast because I can actually have men that, that have been there chat about football. And I'm no better than anyone. I love football as much as, but I also know that I can't discuss certain things because it's just, my mind, my head will go. My head will just go. If you I want to be able to voice your opinion. And if a man doesn't feel that you're right, he can come with another view, understand where you're coming from, but then help you see, all right, cool. This mm. is how X, Y, and I don't mind that. Mm. But when you got man, nah, he's dead and he's but a why? dead man. But why is he dead? Why is he dead? Like, hold on, number one, how can you call a man in the Prem dead? Yeah. Yeah, like he's got to have some ability. Like, just say he's not that good. You don't rate him. He's not that good for you. Mm. But don't start calling man dead. You can't be dead and be top level. Mm. You may not be like as of, a, of another man's quality or whatever, but don't disrespect, man. Don't, like, respect everyone's craft. And, like, don't disrespect no one. Yeah. Okay, so, right. The next, the next bit before we, like, start rounding up, right, this conversation gone quick. Right. Right. Oh, for real, isn't it? I don't know. Right. Um, I want you to speak on, like, because obviously you, you've been in the league now, yeah? You've been in the league. So there came a point where you've had to drop down. Mm-hmm. Right. So speak on what goes what goes on in your mind. Is is it a thing of like, you know what? Offers probably come in, but I played in the league. Now I'm staying in the league. I can't drop down. Or is it just a thing of, you know, what deal is 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 there? Do, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like how, yeah. how how does it make you feel like the pride behind it or the ego behind it? Um, it's interesting because no matter what, you always want to try and stay as high as, as possible, innit? Mm. But then again, like I said, sometimes you visualise and you understand that and you see a pattern. So at Yeovil, unless you was like a young youth coming up and you got to move up, then whenever you was there, it was more or less, whenever you left Yeovil, it was always a struggle to get somewhere. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it was a, always a constant and it was like, Yeovil was, it just, it just felt like they was never given that respect. And, you know, I remember a coach from over Stephen, he said it to me as well. One time, like, the issue that I'm going to have is that football can be very smug. Mm-hmm. You know, I was released from Yeovil. So it's like, again, it's like the name brand thing, you know. Back in the day, if you would ever add three stripe and you try to come around with a two stripe, mm-hmm. now a certain man's going to deal with you, you know what I mean? So... There was that element that I had already foreseen before, which I knew I may encounter. So getting there, it was like, all right, yeah, it's frustrating because you want to be joking ball, innit? Mm. You know? Um, but again, like, what has helped me is the fact that when I went to India and I done that 10-day silent retreat, which was no reading, no writing, no talking, mm. no eye contact, you know what I mean? Like, 10 days pure silence. Like, you, all you have is your, your, your thoughts and your emotions to deal with, innit? You know, you have that thing of not clinging to anything. You know, mm-hmm. no desire, you don't cling to it. No sensual desire because, you know, if I receive something good and I say, for example, if I'm climbing a mountain and I see a shop and I'm hungry and I'm like, I start gloating for the shop and now I just cling to whatever's in the shop and I don't move up the mm-hmm. rest of the mountain. Mm-hmm. That's damage to me, innit? Because now... I'm not able to climb that mountain to get full clarity of what man's life and direction should be. So again, now, so now when I'm in a situation, it's always putting all of those things into place because your ego is always going to be there. It's always going to pop up, but it's about regulating it. So it was like, you know what, whatever comes up to a degree that's within a vicinity, Mm. I'm on. 
you yeah. know. So then obviously the Dagenham um, situation popped up, and I'm like, I look at it, I'm like, but Dagenham can get back up there, mm. you know. What I mean, and it's not too far. Cool, like let's go. Mm. You know, obviously go there and whatnot. Have, have the season. Um, end of the season was a bit mad. Ones and twos with the manager, not a negative, but obviously said I wanted to stay. Um, he also wanted to say, and then it just all went left, like completely left. It made no sense, but it is life again. But mm. again, the whole ego thing always pops up because you've said something that's gone another way, and it's like, how did we even get here? But again, it's like finding that mutual balance and then, all right, cool. This happens in football, it happens in life, isn't it? Like, we move again, mm. and then again, it was now still waiting to see what pops up. You know, and as you get on, man, start looking at you. All right, can I make money? If I can't really make money from a player, it doesn't really matter so much the expertise. Like, man, are happy to take a a youth man certain times from a pro club because it's like a name thing and hope that all right he does well and whatever. So there's that element there of a bit of frustration as well because you're like, bro, like, I ain't even trying to offer no big piece. You know mm. what I mean? And I would add a lot more experience and energy than some of these other men. Like, I don't understand the stuff that I do, right? When I fast, like, there's a whole different process going off. Like, mm. there's certain men who ain't nowhere near my age and they still can't beat me in a race. Mm. Man's ducking my night at training and, and all these stuff. Like, mm. so there's a whole element to it. But again, this is where, like, the, the football system and the, the visual of it is still in that old age because... Time moved on where our bodies and everything, we still move like a lot. If you're dealing with your body right and you're dealing with all the stuff right, for example, like the fasting, it re- it sets you back like a good five years. If you get the fast right, rejuvenate yourself and take five years off your life. But yeah? have you, listen, let's, let's, let's talk about this fasting thing. Because <laughs> I can, I've done it twice now. And the first time I did it, five days, cool. Second time, five days. And I always know after the third day, that's where I'm really going to... No, no, no. So the first two days, I just get that. I'm just hungry, in it. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm hungry. And I get this headache that lets me know I'm hungry. And, and then the headache just stays with me. Do you get what yeah. I'm saying? Where I just don't even... I don't even acknowledge the headache anymore. But listen, see that fourth and fifth day? Mm-hmm. The, the first time I did it, I kid you not, it got to the point I was getting up and my body felt like it was shutting down, bro. I don't know if you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. I know my body why, felt yeah. like it was shutting down. And then I'd come back and I'd be like, rah. So mm. it gets to the point where I'm just like, you know what? I just got to be careful with, with how I'm using my energy in it. Cool. Mm. This time, pretty much the same thing. Like, I was saying I was meant to record a pod that day. I had I could not move. Do you get know what I'm saying? But because I'm stubborn, I'm like, yeah. nah, in my head, if I say I'm going to do this, mm. I'm, I'm going to do it. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. But like, how do you do, like, just water, bruv, like, I don't know if my body can get used to that, you know? Well, I know it can. I know yeah. it can get used to it, innit? But, like, how long did it take you to get to the point where, because you did seven, bruv. Yeah, I if I did seven now, you, you, they'd be picking me up off the floor, bruv. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> bro, I don't know how what? you did it. Like, I think because when I first started it, I done a one day, and that was tough. Mm. I remember the last couple of hours I'm thinking, yo, this is mad. And I'm like trying to center myself. I'm like, the time just started moving slow the last two hours. Mm. Yeah? But obviously eventually man get there and I'm like, all right, cool. Then I remember fasting again or I'm tired for like, I think a couple of days. Mm. And I got injured one time. I think I done my, my ligament. And I said, all right, cool. I'm going to fast because again, it's a speeding up process of the injury. You know what I mean? Like when animal gets wounded in the in the world, they fast, they don't eat nothing. And that's why, because obviously you everything goes to the healing of where it needs to be healed. We now haven't got the distraction of the food in the way and whatever toxins, X, Y, and Z. I don't even know that. Yeah, so but again, like all of these stuff I've experienced. So it's like for me, all right. I respect you if you're a scientist or whatever, yeah, but some of them man that ain't done the experiences themselves. Mm. They may have tested other people, yeah, but I've put myself in the situation to see if this really works. Mm. You know what I mean, so so when I talk, I talk from a place of real experience, not just saying something for the sake of just saying it. 
So again, it was a build-up process. Some people have respect them when they joined in the other day with a quarantine water fast and they done all mm. 72 hours. I'm like, I rate that. Your first time you done 72, like, mm. ting. But, so I said, like, you kind of get the understanding of how it's going to feel. And then, so like, when I said seven, I don't know, some, some, in the week, or well, sorry, um, a few months ago, I just kept saying to myself, I'm going to seven, man, because I normally do three days, but I don't know, stop telling me to do seven. I don't know why. Yeah? And part of me was thinking, you know what? The last year and a half has been like so mad, like physically and mentally like drained, like so much what man had actually had to go through, which I wouldn't wish on my, on my, on my, on my I don't have any enemies, but I wouldn't mm. wish on it. You know what I mean? Like it's just been not nice whatsoever. And I'm like, you know what? I just need a full recharge. Mm. There's no other way to do it than that. So now when this whole COVID situation pops off, I'm like, there's no better time, you know? Literally, there's no better, because now it's fully peaceful, you know? Everything's at a kind of a standstill. There's no better time. So I just thought, let me do a video, put the video out. Couldn't believe how many people decided that they want to get involved and give it a go. And it was just nice, you know, getting people to understand, like, you know, it's mainly our habits that we're battling against and you know it takes real discipline and then when people finish whether it be a yeah, one day 24 hours or whatever so it'll be people are now saying you know what they're gonna value more time with whoever value what they're putting into their system you know take more precaution within themselves because now a different awareness has hit so for me the first five days felt very easy mm. but then it was the last two which became tough yeah. Out of nowhere, yeah, because I was kicking ball and stuff um, the day before. I was like, you know, let me just kick some ball, whatnot, like by myself. And then I remember the last two days just felt tough. So I remember the the sixth day, yeah, I didn't do anything. I literally mm. didn't nothing. I was normal, my normal morning routine. I didn't do anything. Every other day I felt good. Mm. Then I don't know. Someone hit me and said, you know what? I remember a man said to me a, a few weeks ago. He's like, do you know, seven is like. It's a spiritual number. It's a yeah, biblical it number. You know? Mm. you know, God created the heavens and earth, seven days, year six, and then obviously, but, you know, chilled out on the seventh. You know, the Bible was broken down into seven books. Then you had like seven Psalms attributed to David and then seven men were named as in the, mm. the, towards God. And it was like, maybe, like, this is now another level of self that I've now hit. Yeah. So I said, you know what? The seventh day, let me just make sure I do everything. Yeah. That I know what to do because if I do this, then I know all right, cool, I've reached the next level and understanding myself. And especially with all the fear that was going off with mm. COVID, you know, I'm like, all right, we're going to be in a battle here. Yeah, so I need to make sure man's mindset is in a good place because if anyone needs man's help and situations that like, I need to be able to just be in a place where I'm like, all right, cool, like I can manoeuvre mm. and not all of this this harmony and everything and whatnot. So, yeah, man, like, it was wicked. And then, like, I was doing a little bit of Tai Chi with it as well and getting the understanding of the, the principles of Tai Chi and sink down, stay down, and why they stay at a level mm. when they sink is because when you reflect it into last, so once they sink down and they've got to stay down in a, in a whole sequence, they've got to stay there. Mm. And they say to do with consistency and commitment. So, again, flipping that into life, Anything man do has to have a consistency and commitment once we say we're going to do it. Yeah. You know, I had that another principle called neutral, which was um, when you're trying to flow with all the mood, with like the yin and the yang, then you can't afford to have any preconceptions about the next moves because mm. you're not flow how you should flow. You know, yeah. what I mean, your body's going to move. But so again, in life, if we're going into a discussion with something about it versus me and you having our little chat, like, Man has to hear you out rather than thinking about what you're next going to say and to try and because then our convoy really going to flow. Yeah. I really then listening to you. And I mean, vice versa, if you're expecting me to say this or do that, then so it was good learning the Tai Chi and then the principles and understanding, all right, cool, how do we attribute this and place this in our life? So since then, I can't lie, I felt like I can't talk to some people, not in a negative way, it's because. Yeah, yeah, yeah of how I see things right now, yeah, I know it's not cool in what's going off, but how I see things, like, 
and the opportunities and how we know we're going to have to move forward and how life is not going to be the same. And the way I'm feeling in a good place, yeah, I'm still trying to help one and two situations out, but it's like, I feel in a good, and I feel like obviously, because some people are looking at a lot of the negatives mm. in this thing, it's like, because of how I am, it may radiate too much positivity. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm not really empathetic in a certain way when it's not that like, man, show a bit of empathy. Like, I don't like what's going off, but at the same time, we also have to see what's likely to happen within the future. Like, everyone's in their yard, like, right now. You know what I mean? Like, what can man do in a sense from my yard that can help people think mm. a different way? Cool, the fasting has triggered so many people. And like, when people are hitting me up, People say, listen, I'm changing this and I'm changing that. Like, it's made me see this. So, the seven-day thing is just powers on a whole, man. Like, powers that yeah. like, big up everyone else because they kind of, all their support and people getting involved kind of like help me look at life differently again as well. You get me? Yeah, bro. I'm, I'm, I saw people getting involved who I know, who I didn't know, like, knew you or anything. I'm like, raw, so where's she doing it? Like, like raw, okay. Like, like, some people I didn't even know, but they were like, because of, the stories that people were sharing, mm. it inspired other people to give it a go as well, mm. which is why they say like, that's one thing I feel like we need to do as people then, especially in this time is express our emotions and our feelings because the more we keep things in, this is where it becomes that detrimental um, effect where, you know, we start talking about like mental health, you know, the downness mm. and people keeping, keeping things locked in. So now like people are expressing themselves within the water fast and sharing People that thought they couldn't do one hour and then they seen someone say a video, boy, I didn't think I could do X, Y, and Z, but I've done the whole 24 hours or I've done this amount. People are hitting their hit like, you know what, fam? I'm going to give this a go, you know? Like, yeah. my brother from QPR even hit man up. You know what I mean? Like, y'all been giving it a go. Like, I'm like, bro, like, I didn't even know. Like, and a couple of other man, other ballers, obviously, a couple man was keeping it to themselves and whatever. But I'm like, bro, like, yeah. Bro, like, I didn't even know man's looking at man's page and, you know, like mm. that, bro. But I'm like, I respect it a lot because, again, like, we've got to do what we need to do in our own comforts. Mm. Some men don't want to say they're doing it or whatever because, I, again, I understand certain positions that we're in. But, bro, it was, it was mad. It was mad. It was mad. Yeah. But I, 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 I think what I like most about it is, for me personally, it, it teaches me how to focus. Mm. Because when you ain't got energy, to be wasted on certain things. Listen, you're very careful with who and what you give energy to. Do you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. like, there's certain times when I'm when I'm bubbling, whatever. Certain conversations come, and I don't really have, but I'll give it. I'll give it magic. But listen, yeah. when you ain't got that energy to be given, you 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 clock onto. No, nah, you know what? It's not worth it. I need. I still need energy to make sure I can go out and and go up, get up and down my stairs and whatever. I'm not going to use that energy to make yeah, yeah. do, do you get what I'm saying? And, and that's what I love the most. And even once my energy comes back, mm. like, it's, it's a mindset that stays with you. Do you get what I'm saying? Because you, know yeah. you, you, you know that you just said, like, now the way your head is and where your mind is, right, like, you're in a good, it's because it stays with you. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's where I'm, I'm at now as well. Like, my, my girl will be asking me, Oh, what are you doing this for? What are you doing this for? I'm like, listen, I just need to focus for that. I just need to cleanse. Yeah. It's not even about cleansing just my body, it's cleansing my mind. And do you get yes. what I'm saying? Mm. So like that's why I'll, I'll always I'll always be up for doing it. It's hard and I always dread it, but it's one of them things where I've just got to decide. Like if you have you not hit me up that day, I've been yeah. thinking since I did it last year, I've been thinking to do it. Have yeah, you not yeah. hit me up that day and then like thingy and then called me out? I, w I probably would have done it because I've been dreading yeah. it. But yeah. I was like, you know what? Cool, cool. Just do it. Because you know what? Like, there's so much, like, because what people don't get as well is that our gut is connected everywhere. Mm. So we see with our eyes, we see with our ears. So, for example, you see an accident or you see a video that kind of disgusts you. You go like that, you just tilt in, don't you, from the court. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you hear something that makes you feel vulgar or certain way. Like, again, you just. They just cramp in. So mm -hmm. these things cause, dis cause a lot of distress to our digestive system, you know? So again, so the fast, so a lot of people like, again, what you're talking about with the focus and you know, right, cool, I can't afford to waste that energy. So now 
depending on how your lifestyle is, stress is a massive killer anyway within itself. Mm. So that's going to cause a lot of inflammation within your, your, your digestive system as well. So now we're just having water alone. We're now cool. It's mucusless. There's no starch, no meat, no nothing that's causing any mucus, no fake veg, no nothing. All right. The body now gets to work. The entire digestive system just goes to work on clock, full force, at all mucus matters that have accumulated since childhood. Not mm. three weeks ago, like mm. childhood that have embedded and embedded. It's like it's like putting your, your rubbish in a dustbin. Mm. And no bin man's coming though, but you put a next one on there and a next yeah. one, the next one, like, and you and the bin man then ain't coming to check you. Like, that's what exactly what it's like. But now we're allowing that bin man to now come and say, All right, cool, do your thing, brother. Yeah, mm. like, get everything out. So, a lot of mental health issues and all mental health is all from the gut, fam. Mm. So, again, this is why, like you said, like, when now we're able to say, No, I can't afford to waste that energy. Now we're clearing away, like, the body's saying, All right, you know what? However, it's embedded in us within a habit. Okay, I'm this way. I'm feisty. I'm feisty. I'm this. It's me. Now, like you said, now when the body's saying, boy, <laughs> got that energy right now, I don't need to really like this no one. All right. So now that energy that's not needed from the body, which is a detriment to the body, the body says, all right, look little more fam. Like anger, don't need you. Frustration, we don't need you. What we need right now is focus. So, Again, like, it's something that needs to be, because again, it's in, it's all in all the Bible, all them religious books and everything, like, mm -hmm. um, fasting's in there, ancient practices, fasting is all in there. And again, it's the, like, again, my friend, he beat cancer recently. And he done one, he done 24 hours. And the way he spoke to man after that 24 hours, like, the fact that he completed it, the way his body felt, he was like, no, oh, fam, like, I don't, I, I can't, under, like, why I feel so alive. My next brethren, um, anemic, um, obviously the blood deficiencies. Mm. And he's like, normally he has to have supplements. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He said, bruv, I've done it 24 hours and I just had energy the whole day. Mm. Like, you sent man a video, like, like, and you know when it's, it's goodness, because when you're sending man thing live in the flesh, mm. when... I didn't even ask for a video, you know, like getting profound effects. So just the whole knock on thing and just seeing people like look at things differently. Mm. It was wicked. Like it just made man feel even more happy. Like, you know what? Like people are seeing like, yeah, and like I said, it's a negative time that's been being happening, but it's trying to find the positive within a negative mm. to change that negative into a positive. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's totally true with this time. That's why now with this time at first, this whole COVID thing messed up a lot of things because I had a lot of like podcasts planned and and then I just thought, you know what? While I'm in my house, if there's a way to do it, just do it. So now I'm just on, just trying to put out positive conversations out with people and and mm -hmm. to be honest, it's actually worked out better. Yeah. It's actually worked out better because now it's not a thing of like I need to get you to get to a destination and. Yeah. and to make sure schedules fit and blah, blah, blah. So now I'm just trying to, you know, put my output, increase my output and just get that positive stuff going because I don't like listening to the to news and I don't like, you know what I mean? And all the, I've had to tell my mum, stop sending me WhatsApp messages and, <laughs> and, and all them things. Like, it's just, bro, I ain't got time for it, honestly. I, I just don't have time for it. So uh, I need to do this though because you like, your thing has now made a real impact. Mm. Do you know, one thing I have noticed, which you're not really getting like certain blogs, mm. I don't see them posting your thing. Them, yeah, listen, that's a conversation oh, for another day, but yeah, go on, go on. let's keep it real with it. Yeah, I'm thinking about this because I'm like, hold on, I see some other blogs posting certain other man having these football conversations, and it's just like, what is this? Like, to a point where like, I just scroll past it now because I'm like. Mm. It is like how many men talking about X, Y, and Z, and it's like, what is this? Half of them ain't even played ball before, mm. but they've got this big, big opinion. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like your thing is vital right now because mm. you're getting real man on there when you're having proper conversations. Mm. 
and there's real reason and understanding about it. But again, like man, see it like when your thing is genuine for not just yourself and, and it's for others as well, mm. you always need that fight, innit? But yeah. again, we're in the yard right now and people can't avoid it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm saying. And even a little bit on, 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 on that, like it used to bother me before. It used to, I'm like, bro, why aren't these men posting me? Why aren't these men posting me? And a couple, couple of men do post me up still, so, so big them up. But then it, it got to the point where I started attaching importance to that. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? And I started attaching importance to numbers rather than impact. Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? So now I'm just like, because of the things that, that were going on behind the scenes where, you know, people would be like, raw, just what that's a movie with. Get yeah, me, that's yeah. whatever. But now it's a, it's a thing of like, just do it because you love it. The people mm-hmm. who, who want to hear it will always hear it. And at the end of the day, the lo- we just did on, a couple episodes back, 100th episode, bro, with Andy Cole. Do you, yeah. get, do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? And Andy Cole's not no, he's not no small, he's not, not no small player. Right? You get me? You know what I'm saying? Get me. We've, had, in fact, well, we've had him, we've had, look, we've got you on there, we've got Bradley Johnson, we've had Cyrus Christie. Do you get what I'm saying? That like, players who, who in the game are respected. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and all I'm trying to do is just get more, more, more players on to just come and share their experiences and whatever. Cause I don't really care about, like, if you notice, I've not asked you, oh, who's the best player you played with? And I'll ask those questions, but yeah, yeah. It's, not really, it's not really what I, what I, want, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I want to talk about. Because I, I, I'm a man that, that hears, I mean, that learns through, like, I don't read a lot of books. I, yeah. I want to, but I don't read a lot of books, but I like hearing next man's experiences. Yeah. And seeing how they, you know, went through it. So if if I learned that way, then other people might learn that way and other people might find it interesting. So that's what I try to do. But in, in yeah. regards to other people posting, I, I, I couldn't even care less anymore. Because... Yeah, no, like, well, again, like, again, when we start certain, starting, like, you kind of... Well, again, like, when I done my... Obviously, I got my, my food show, the vegan food and vibes. Mm. You know, and obviously, like, I know what it's going to be like. Like, people ain't going to, like... We know there's mad algorithms and them thing there. Yeah. yeah. That man got 3,000 followers on, on Twitter, but I post it on Twitter and I can't get, what, all three, four um, clicks. So that ain't making no sense. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, again, there's also that battle that we're having to, to deal with as well. But, again, can't really attach any importance to it. It's just, like you said, you're trying to just give the people them something good. Mm-hmm. And I'm just trying to raise awareness to healthier meals with that, with a bit of fun. Yeah. And whoever's going to gravitate to it, gravitate to it. When I done the launch of the experience, which was a free course meal mm-hmm. and a live ban, it was mad. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like people like, nah, hitting other, how come you didn't invite me? How comes this? How comes that? Da, 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 da. So it's like, well, at least I know there's something building. And I'm like, I prefer it to be genuine mm-hmm. than linking up some man and say, all right, cool, I need to give me 5,000 followers. But then mm. seeing comments or likes, the 5,000 followers and man's all getting 10 likes, you know, yeah. it don't add up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So at least, you know, you're building up your team. Mm. Like I said, got a man like Bradley supporting the team, Andy Cole supporting the team. So mm. them thing like, you know, when man are stepping on your platform like that, yeah, you know, you've got a, a massive respect there. So... Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, and that's, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's got to the point now where, literally, not even trying to big myself up, I don't even have to approach men anymore. Mm-hmm. I will get DMs. I got DMs from this morning saying, yo, when can I come on? Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? And I'm a man that's just like, listen, this ain't, no, this ain't no big whatever. You'll still see me. I'm still that same guy. I'll go to Harrogate. I'll struggle to get a first team game now, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, uh, yeah. I'm... Who cares? Like, come on, if you've got something to say, then come. But I can't just have any man just come. Yeah, no, no, because you've got to have a purpose. It's got to be what you're trying to embody, innit? Mm. You know, I don't have any Tom, Dick and Harry on the, on the show and they're not really going to come with anything that is going to be very much beneficial. Mm, yeah, I, I did it once where I had someone on and I was thinking, oh, I just did this, like, it was early days. And I was thinking, yeah, yeah. why yeah. do I do this, man, like, I did it once and I said, never again, man. Never again. You have to do it to say not, you're not going to do it again. You know, you yeah, ex- exactly. Exactly. So you so, can pass that info to someone else and if they take heed, they take yeah, heed. Trust me. But one last thing though, before, before I let you go. Bruh, 
So imagine to my surprise, when I'm watching the Dulwich Hamlet game, mm-hmm. um, the FA Cup one, who was it against? Carla. Yeah. And then I see the starting lineup. I see Smith from that. That can't be Smith. No, that's not Smith. See the game start, and I'm seeing you. Hmm. And I'm just like, raw. What, what? And I heard, what, you signed that day, innit? Or the day before, something like that? Yeah, a couple of days before, yeah. Like, did you sign? Did, did Gavin come and say, listen, bro, we need you for this FA Cup game, blah, blah, blah. Rav, you know what? It was mad because I was training there for about I think, a month. Oh, you were training with them already? I was training for about a month. And then, oh, okay. Been like, oh, like, I enjoyed it there. It was everything. It was wicked. I like it. Like, it's wicked over there. You know what I mean? Different. Um, but I just really turned around and he was like, I said, like, he said, listen, like, struggling right now. Obviously, we've got so much on the ways, but at the moment, I can't do anything. Like, there's going to be nothing. I don't want to, like, mess you around and say, just wait this week or wait whenever. Mm. Just for like, man, to man, like, just want to say that there's nothing there at the moment. You get me? I was like, all right, cool. And then I wasn't going to go in the following week, but someone said to me, let me just go in. So then I went in. And then, I don't know, like, we're doing team shape. And, like, I was in, like, the first team shape. A bit confused, isn't it? So come mm. and start running a little joke. What? Man just come through and sign for the FA Cup game, man. But I'm literally just giggling because you know sometimes man say foolishness and you just mm. giggle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm like, all right, cool. Then I shouldn't have been getting pulled and saying, yo, like, we want you to sign, da 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 da, boom, boom, boom. So I'm baffed now, like, I don't know what's going off here. Like, mm. remember, like, my whole mindset has changed of like, all right, cool, there's nothing here. Yeah. But I'm still going to come in and train. So I've just come to just train to just keep sharp, mind everything. Then all of a sudden, like, like, it's just now gone full pace. And I'm like, rah, like, this is now a different level because the focus just come out of nowhere, like it hit me. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I've got my focus, but that football focus of being on it for the game has now come out of nowhere mm-hmm. because now I need to be ready literally now in like the next three days or four days, whatever it was. Mm. So I'm like, all right, cool. Then I remember some of the players come, oh, it's Mike, you need your ticket, you need your ticket. I said, bro, just wait, hold on one second. <laughs> I only came in here to train like normal. Mm. I didn't expect this, like, so it was interesting again, like, the difference in like, how uh, there was a mentality shift out of nowhere. Mm. And it made me again, look at football on, on another level again, like, bro, like, although I felt like I was focused, there's like another awareness or focus that comes into place mm. when you actually, when you ain't playing playing for a little while and now you get a team because mm. now it's like, all right, like it's like flipping Clark Kent having to put mm. on the suit and saying, all right, cool, Superman time. Like, yeah. Like, raw, like, but it was a bit hard to focus in the beginning because it was like, raw, like this is a bit too quick, like come out of nowhere, innit? So mm. yeah, then obviously man signed and then played the game on the, on the Friday mm. and, yeah, but it was just, it's mad. Obviously, like, it was like, boy, like, there's going to be a few men that's not um, happy because of their place. But at the same time, it was like, I've been in that position as well. Like, mm. back in the day where, you know, you feel like you're going to play and then you don't play. And just like mm. the nature the of the game sometimes, isn't it? And obviously, you don't, like, want anyone to be upset. But just the nature of the game, isn't it? If I'm, if, if I'm going to be really honest about that game... That is the that epitomized or showed me clearly the difference between um, what's the word getting a run of games and not getting a run of games for you. How do you mean? Because, because you played well, but there are certain times in that match where I know uh, this is Nathan. I mean, yeah, this is Nathan or Black, and he's got five game five games under his belt. This guy's never doing this. Do you get what I'm saying? Oh, or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? So, like, there was, I'm looking and, and I remember in the group, people were like saying, Oh, this number three is all right, isn't it? And I'm just like, Yeah, he is, but see him after a couple more games, isn't it? Because I could tell, I could just look at you and just see that. I can't lie, it was tough. Because remember, like, St. Nathan, you know, I'm not playing properly competitive for a while now, it's what's like since May, and I think I signed November. Mm. Yeah, there was a couple of like um, reserve games and stuff, but it's not the same. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's true, like you said, fam. Like it was like, boy, like you know, the body's trying to get. Cause now, 
there's all different muscles working now in that body. Mm. You know, so yeah, again, like it took a couple of games again to kind of start getting into that groove and everything. And but again, it's just a, another learning curve that you kind of just take on board and learn to to understand it and just try and work with it. Yeah, what's 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 next though? Next season, do you know what's what's happening? Obviously, the season's becoming right. now. What's that group? Quiet. No, 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 nothing. Like, so, again, it's just, just in a sense, just planning forward, like, especially like my one name for Smith stuff and my vegan food and vibes page. Just trying to stay with that. Obviously, like, still going out in the morning doing football stuff and running and biking. Mm. And, I love the game, innit? Yeah, but you're, you're, you're still here. You're still here to play, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm there, bro. Like, bro, the way I feel, yeah, towards the game is at a next level still. You know what I mean? Obviously, but right now, now with no one knowing what's what, I still got to try and look after myself in that sense of, you know, other avenues as well, innit? Mm, yeah, no, 100%, man. That's, that's important, man. If ever there's a time to, you know, if, if ever there's a time where you, you know you have to look at other avenues or, or the importance of other avenues, it's now. Mm. you get what I'm saying? It's, it's now, man. But no way, you can come down. Actually, don't, don't come here and get you. Don't, don't. <laughs> I know that playing, bro. I know I played, bro. If I <laughs> Johnny's still there. Who? Johnny was any that there? Is he there? Oh, the coach. Yeah, the coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny, Johnny's still. The yeah. yeah. school the coach. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. So, shout out Johnny. I play. I, I always get on to. You. Yeah, he's he's still there. Tom obviously he's still there, and, what? and oh, Bo- sugar. yeah, Bones. What is yeah, Bones there? Who? Bones, McDonald. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Fam, I always say this year, Mac is the most frustrating player for me ever. Cause the guy is bad. Mm-hmm. He's bad, but he's bad when he wants to be bad. Yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, he's it back to me still. Yeah, duh. But yeah. but yeah, love for coming on, man. Oh, um, man I well. It's been a long time coming. And um, I'm glad we finally got it over. And we've had a good one as well. It's almost two hours. Bro. Time's gone. Man's all still eating my fruit still. Not even finished. Normally that's finished within about half hour. No, nah, bro, listen. I understand you're doing the whole vegan thing, bro, but you can still get... <laughs> you, can still get you can still get proper bowls, bro. What's wrong with you? Bro? Bro, I'm <laughs> food. <laughs> you know what I mean, guys? Yeah. Bro, you can still get proper proper plate of bowl or spoon. Anything in there, I know. Come on, because we got the, the proper bowls. You get me see the engraved oh, calabash. Gosh. Yeah. Different things. You get me, brother? Oh, this guy. But yeah, love for that. Um, yeah, guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing. Um, we're going to keep putting these out during lockdown. Smithy, I hope you've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed it still, man. Good interview. Good show. Big up yourself. Yeah. Counter attack at Barca. Mad thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. But yeah, guys, um, we're out, man. Until next time.